This week's interview is with Susan Sin, who teaches second grade at ASU Prep. Ms. Sin, could you first of all talk a little bit about your teaching experience prior to coming to ASU? Well, I'm originally from the East Coast, uh, Jersey. I taught there uh, for about three years in a charter school, actually. Um, it was in an urban neighborhood. It was, it was really challenging, but I think it kind of um, set the stage for where, uh, how I was going to teach and um, my philosophy of teaching. Um, after that, I taught a couple of years in Vermont. I was really fortunate. That was completely the opposite, where really, really, really rural area. Um, the entire school was had 47 kids, and um, I taught in a two-three combined grade with only about 11 kids. Um, it was wonderful because I. I got to, it looped, so I got to see them again, and um, really strong sense of community. That's what I've learned um, as far as not only just within teachers, but outside. So, um, and then um, I came here to Arizona. I taught in Queen Creek for a couple of years, um, and that was also a really big culture shock for me because it's a much bigger district. Um, really more of a traditional school district system that um, I wasn't so used to. Um, but again, it, it kind of um, prepared me for, especially things like um, how Arizona assesses kids and um, the, the teaching philosophy there. So it was, it was really interesting. So this year being your first year at ASU Prep, talk a little bit about some of the things you're doing in your, your class this year and teaching your students and, and your sort of your approach to teaching students. Um, well, I'm especially excited this year because I'm I'm kind of uh, taking charge of the science. Uh, we just finished our weather unit, and students um, we ended up making a culminating lap book project that kind of showcased every. Um, every aspect of the, the science unit we did. So I really wanted the students to become meteorologists themselves, understand how, um, how scientists use, uh, you know, basic inquiry process of observation and apply that to um, how they would predict the weather. Um, observing clouds or observing the wind speed so um, the students made their own anemometers and went outside and they measured temperature they also made their own thermometers to understand you know how this how it works um, so that was that was really exciting for them where they, it's not something that they just kind of take something they learn something in the classroom and it just stays there. I've heard so many times, you know, my kids coming back from school and saying, you know, the weather was, you know, I, I saw a cumulus outside or um, I knew it was going to be this kind of weather and I made my own wind sock or I put the wind sock outside and I noticed it was really windy and so um, it, it, it was wonderful because I knew it would stay with them. So we're starting matter also, and really focusing on the inquiry process again, which are these just fundamental tools that um, I I really love seeing them getting a grip of and knowing that they could apply this in in any content, um, you know, and in any grade level. So Good. it's exciting. And ASU prep being a college prep um, school, and you have second graders, so. What are some of the things that you do in second grade to really start at that age, even at that early of an age, getting kids focused on going to college and being successful in college? The idea of um, accountability, where they, I want my students to understand that they need to take responsibility for their own learning. I'm going to give them the tools um, on, you know, on how they're going to learn, um, what strategies they can use to learn concepts. Um, obviously, they need to know the content, and that's my responsibility. But I, the the biggest thing, is, and for all teachers, I think it, we want them to pass on that responsibility to them, so that they become independent thinkers and learners, um, and become ready for for when they go to higher education. Good.
Good. What is your, your most memorable moment or, or most enjoyable moment of teaching that you, that you can recall? I, I really enjoy when I just kind of sit back and observe students um, talking about their learning. So when, you know, when, I, when they go off and do their activity, just kind of being that fly on the wall and listening in on, you know, them really kind of having discussions among themselves, again, um, it reinforces that wonderful feeling of them taking that responsibility on their own of the learning. Um, listening to, listening in on them, making, having these aha moments on their own, um, and also taking a concept uh, even further than I would expect. So I, I think that's my biggest joy in, in education and teaching is, um, again, seeing them take this take this concept and then flying with it and talking about it in different ways. Good. One of the things I always like to ask our teachers in these interviews to kind of give the people that are watching uh, an idea of some of the uh, things our teachers do outside of the school. What are some of the things that you enjoy when you're not teaching? Um, I actually graduated with an art degree. Um, so for when I was younger, I, I really tried to show in some galleries. I, I managed to do that. Um, art is either in music or um, painting has always been a part of my life. Um, health is always a part of my life. I'm, I actively practice yoga. So yeah, um, I think those, those things kind of balance my life and I like, I like going home to them too. Good. Well, you said that you like sitting back and kind of being a fly on the wall and watching your students, and I certainly like sitting back and watching you with your kids because it's really great to see what an outstanding teacher you are and how well you interact with them. We're very happy to have you at ASU Prep. Thank you very much. I'm so happy to be here.